Today on CityCast Boise, Idaho's been in the national news lately, which can be exciting or embarrassing, depending on the story. So what's our reputation like these days? We're resharing our December chat with our boss and non-Boisean David Plotz. From militia membership to blue turf gatekeeping, we find out which stereotypes stick. It's Thursday, March 16th. I'm Emma Arnold, and this is what Boise's talking about. All right, this is a fun one today. I'm excited. Frankie Barnhill is here with me, and we have our CEO uh, of CityCast, David Plotz, with us today. And so, David, let's hear these very basic questions about Boise. So I live in Washington, D.C., and we have CityCast all over the country, and now we have one in Boise. And I realized as whenever we launch a new city, like I I know so little about these cities that we're launching in. And I thought it would be helpful for your listeners to understand what kind of ignorant views people outside <laughs> of Boise have about Boise. So you're going to hear those today in the form of my really dumb questions about Boise. <laughs> I feel like I have a vague idea since I travel quite a bit of like what these could be since, you know, a lot of times when I'm in a city, people are like, so did you start your own militia or did you just join one? So <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't even have that question. <laughs> Is that on there, David? Not on there. No. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> That's a really good question. <laughs> the answer, of course, is that I started my own, just to be yeah. clear. Uh, yeah. Are you carrying now? That was not one of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but, you know, I am in my own home, so... Are the potatoes actually better than other places? My feeling, <laughs> a potato is a potato... <laughs> But maybe I'm wrong. Okay. How Frankie and I were like, the first question, 100% will be <laughs> potatoes. Yeah. It's always going to be potatoes. So, uh, Frankie, go ahead. <laughs> you know, okay, I will say, I think the thing that's weird here is that it's it's not always the easiest to find Idaho potatoes in Idaho in our grocery stores. There's been this thing where, like, it's actually kind of can be difficult to find Idaho potatoes here, which is so frustrating because everybody else gets to eat our amazing potatoes. They get shipped out of Idaho. Are they better? We definitely are leading in potato research here. Uh, there's a lot of research around how to grow them the most efficiently and without blights and all this stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to say they're better. That sounds like a no. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like a no, but we wish it was a yes. I always, when people ask me about potatoes when I'm on the road, I'm always like, you know, we're also the lentil capital of the world. So <laughs> why, don't, why, don't, why doesn't our lentils, they don't get any love. No love for the lentils, just the potatoes. In Salt Lake City, I've noticed, every, and in Denver, I think everyone talks about going hiking all the time. Is that true in Boise? Is everyone always, like, talking about going hiking? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's a it's a very hiky town. We have the foothills, and uh, it's definitely, like, I don't know. What do you think, Frankie? Top five things people really enjoy doing? Yeah, yeah. You're always talking about your most recent hike or the hike that you want to do next. Now, uh, I think Boise is kind of interesting because I feel like we're, we're we are outdoorsy, but we're not necessarily as outdoorsy as other Western cities. Which I'm going to get some crap for that on socials, but it's kind of true. Where I think hard truths. From Frankie, Frankie <laughs> people, they're going to at me. Uh, people can totally not be outdoorsy at all here, and I feel like maybe in places like Denver, uh, Portland, uh, you kind of have to be, but you can also kind of fake it in any of those cities too. So who knows? Yeah. I definitely have friends who have like never been to a hot springs, who have lived there, their, lived in Boise their whole lives, never been to a hot springs, never been hiking, have never like gone skiing. And I'm like, what do you, what do you do? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, in that vein, has anyone in Boise ever walked anywhere to do an errand? Or is that unthinkable and impossible? Well, you know, like if you're downtown, if you live on the north end, uh, it's very walkable down there. Otherwise, we uh, outside of that area, pretty much, you know, like uh, Vegas style, Phoenix style, like uh, a suburban hellscape. <laughs> a lot of our town has like like my street where I live, no sidewalks whatsoever. Uh, you know, nowhere to like comfortably, no bike lanes to like not a very not entirely a very walkable city unless you're downtown. Tough question. Is everyone in Boise except you two an ex-cop from L.A.? <laughs> well, Frankie, 
<laughs> um, well, that is tough. Uh, I would say five years ago, no. But, you know, we've in the last couple of years, pretty much everybody from Orange County has l- white flighted up to Idaho. So, yeah, I'd say that's that's like reputation that we have is kind of true that everybody has moved from like Orange County or San, San Diego after they retired from being a cop and they bought a house up here for like 600000 That was 100000 last year. So I heard of a place that's called Nampa or Nampa. I don't know. Is that like Tampa? Is that a suburb? Is that its own city? What is it a real place? It just is a very funny name. I wish I wish it was Nampa. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. It's uh, it's it's definitely Nampa. And it is a real place. It is a real city in and of itself. But um, it is a yeah, it, it's existed outside of the suburb world. I think Boise is kind of interesting in that there is at least one suburb Meridian that really has kind of always been a suburb. But Nampa and Caldwell are two cities that are nearby that as Boise has grown so much. Now the borders are, you know, right up against each other, basically. And in some place, literally, Really are so Nampa is real. I am going to start saying I'm going to start saying Nampa. Nam, it's Nampa. <laughs> it's going to drive people to the wall. <laughs> oh, I live in Nampa. Yeah, when I first moved here, I was like, I couldn't see the M. I was like, Napa, like Napa Valley. There's really good wine out there, and actually, they're kind of yeah nearby. There is some good wine actually. <laughs> Not really questioned, but that blue field looks kind of silly on TV. Just telling you, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> Uh, Interview over. We're done here. Uh, Wrap it up. We're done. (laughs) But the question it made me ask is, do you guys make other things the wrong color just for kicks? Or is that the only (laughs) thing that you make the wrong color? I have been, you know, approached by Japanese tourists who know about the blue turf. Like it is worldwide. Everybody knows us by it. And I think uh, I think it's actually the right color. And uh, I feel I feel like everybody is jealous that in 1986 or maybe 82, I can't remember when they were like, you know what, greens for dorks, let's go blue, that they didn't think of it first. So, yeah, I think we should we will just start doing everything blue, blue and orange. (laughs) I'm pretty sure the blue turf has been um, copyrighted. Yeah, it has. Like nobody can do that. Right. Yeah, Yeah. it has been. Yeah, that's that seems greedy. (laughs) What (laughs) industries does Boise have besides government? Are there companies that I would be surprised to learn like, oh, actually, uh, you know, Microsoft is located, is headquartered in Boise, not Microsoft, obviously. But yeah, another uh, tech company that starts with micro, though, Micron uh, is here. So semiconductors. So, you know, that big Biden push to get more semiconductors and more um, uh, of those little little parts that go into all of our computers. Uh, that's a big thing here. What else? Uh, have you heard of cheese? We have a couple of cheese factories. <laughs> uh, we do. <laughs> Sorrento's is here. Yes. I forget the other one, but a couple of big cheese factories. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Are there issues that don't seem like they would be red blue issues, but because Boise is a weird has those weird demographics, they actually become red blue issues? I'd say yes to pretty much uh, about everything. You know, we have like the library stuff going on where people are like fighting over books and pulling books, and some of them are fairly benign, but because it's uh, things here are often so like, because we're such a little blue dot in a red state, you know, masks became a huge thing here. You know, they were having masks burning down at the Capitol every Saturday, uh, even though we never had a mask mandate in Idaho. So, yeah, there. I'd say a lot of those issues end up being very political that don't feel like they are that they should be. Yeah, I guess my question, though, is that isn't that everywhere now? Like, it's just so polarized. Or maybe in some ways, Boise is like a little ahead of the curve of we're we're leading the charge in how everything can be political if we want it to be. Um, And then it ends up being political in other places after we've done it. We do it first. Blue turf and uh, really salty politics. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So whenever I talk to somebody who's in one of these high altitude cities, it's always about the baking is so difficult. I have no idea. Is Boise one of those high altitude cities and you talk about baking and how difficult it is or not? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I think we're like, we're not that high, actually. We're, we're not that high up there. Uh, we're like 2,600 or something like that. That's barely mountain. That's what you call Mountain West. <laughs> that is barely mountain. I thought you guys were in the mountains. Come on. Well, and the rest of the state calls us the banana belt down here because we're low and we get way less snow than the rest of the state. So, yeah, we're definitely not up there like Denver. Oh, my God. (laughs) You're like in the Great Plains. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Kind of. We're in like a little divot. The Great Basin is what it's actually called. So, yeah. Yeah. So is Boise the kind of city where people leave and never come back? They leave and always come back or they never leave? 
I'm going to say the second one because I, I left and came back. Most of my friends left for a while and came back. And that's one, like one thing we're really lucky about is that a lot of our artist community will leave and then miss it and come back. So we have like incredible musicians and, you know, visual artists and dancers and stuff who, who are gone for about a decade. And then, you know, you just can't escape it. It can, can be kind of a vortex. So yeah, a lot of people come back here, which is lucky for us. How many years do you have to have lived in Boise until you can start complaining about all the new people? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Feels like now it's like six months and people already start complaining. Like, close the door. No, nobody else can. I just moved here, but I'm still closing the door behind me. Nobody else can join. Uh, yeah, that's. Eh. I mean, I've been here for like 11 years. I feel like I'm. I'm. I'm kind of starting to be able to complain about things. Um, but you know, if I tell people that I've been here for 11 years, that you know, they're like, eh, you're not really from here. I am sure. This is good, such a condescending question. I'm sure there's someone famous from Boise, but who is it? <laughs> Emma never... Arnold. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Aaron <laughs> Paul and David Lynch lived here for a little bit. Wait, you've to Aaron Paul and David Lynch and you're done? Yeah, that's pretty, it's a very <laughs> short list. <laughs> and David Lynch didn't even really live there? No, he only lived here for a while, I think, in junior high. Uh, and yeah, so it, it's a very short list of people. Uh, Dirk Kempthorne, you know, he was the, what, the It doesn't interior. count. He was like the governor <laughs> no, of the it state. Doesn't count. It doesn't, it doesn't count. count. It doesn't <laughs> we, don't, we really don't have anybody. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bleak for sure. But that's because they, you know, they stay. Instead of going and getting famous, they come back right. and, and contribute to our lovely local arts community. Is that your, that was going to ask for an explanation. So that's your explanation, is that? I do think so. Yeah, I think to some degree, uh, it, instead of like staying in L.A. or New York or Chicago or places where you can actually make that happen. I mean, that's what happened for me is I was like, I want to live around my family. You know, I want to be around my people. And I really I lived away from Boise for about 10 years. And then I ended up moving back because I, I really, really missed it. OK, I'm getting I got three more questions. In D.C., where I live, everything is like 22 minutes from everywhere else. And from what I understand, in New York, everything is like 35 minutes from everywhere else. In Boise, how far is everything from everywhere else? Three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say eight, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, about uh, eight minutes. Uh, and that's if you're driving. But I suppose, yeah, because our public transportation is kind of went went. Uh, so, you know, if you're walking or biking, of course, it's going to take longer. But, but driving, everything's eight minutes. That's really great. It's pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, we do, if you're going, if you're commuting from Caldwell or uh, Nampa, uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty much agreed on that we have like some of the worst traffic. Like just that commute mm. has regularly made lists of like worst traffic. Uh, but in, if you're in Boise, yeah, you're, and sometimes it'll take you 15. You'll be like, what's going on here? What's happening? <laughs> Chicago has pizza. Denver has breakfast tacos. Philly has cheesesteak. What does Boise have? Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't. Croquetas. Oh, croquetas. <laughs> yes. Frankie, yes. <laughs> I thought of one right off the top of my head. So, uh, David, do you know what croquetas are? Have you had Basque food before? I think I know it. It's like a fried, uh, it's a it's a fried, maybe cod fish or something like that. Actually, well, it is fried. Is fried is key. <laughs> it's a potatoes. Fr- yeah, yeah. <laughs> potatoey vibe. It's actually a fried flour um, with it's uh, fried gravy, basically. Yes, yes. It's basically like take a roux and fry it and make it crispy on the outside and in a little ball, and it's delicious. And um, yeah, so Basque food uh, is probably a good answer um, that Boise is really proud of, and we celebrate that a lot. And croquetas, I think, are a fan favorite. That sounds amazing. I've never heard of that. It's like the best comfort food in the world. That and like a French onion soup can't beat it. Wow. That is a great answer. Last question. How often do you see a moose or grizzly bear around town? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. We did have a mountain lion that uh, was basically in downtown eh, like sometime earlier this fall. Uh, no grizzlies. Grizzlies are far away from here. Um, but mountain lions, those are scary. And I think we have had a moose like, yeah, you know, in my memory more like one or two times had a moose kind of come through. Um, but yeah, like we were saying, we're kind of in this like little divot where, you know, north of us, tons and tons of wildlife. Like I've seen bears and mountain lions and moose just like an hour and a half from here. But in town, you don't get quite as much activity, for sure. Yeah, it's still exciting when you see a deer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, David, this has been a complete delight and I love all your questions and uh, honestly, a lot of actually very good questions. So I uh, appreciate you coming on and Frankie, thanks for helping me field this uh, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Thanks for being such good sports and letting my ignorance shine forth. <laughs> One more extremely Idaho thing before you go. Love dipping french fries in your milkshake, but wish the work of dipping was done for you? Well, the Idaho Potato Commission and Van Leeuwen Ice Cream have teamed up to create an Idaho malted milkshake and french fries ice cream. According to Boise Dev, the Potato Commission did a national survey, and milkshakes and fries was ranked as one of the best food combos. The ice cream has bits of french fry in a caramel milkshake flavored ice cream and is available online. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend? Leave us a review and subscribe to our Hey Boise newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning for our weekly news roundup, talking reporter intimidation and bike lanes with Heath Drusen. Bye. And David, when you come to Boise, we're getting you croquettas. <laughs> Wait, David, you've never been to Boise? Oh, I should have said that. I was there. I was there for maybe two days once with dropping my friend Matt Mullaney off after college graduation. It was, I had a nice time. It was <laughs> 30 years ago. Well, uh, when you visit next time, you'll be like, hasn't changed a bit. Exactly the same as 1992. <laughs> <laughs> same town. <laughs>